Good afternoon, everyone. I am Kayla hernandez Ujoa from the Federal Communications Commission, and I am here today to give a brief overview of the Affordable Connectivity Program. This is something that many of you have heard about. The Affordable Connectivity Program helps eligible households with payments for their monthly internet bill. So I'm going to go quickly through what is the benefit, who is eligible, and how households can apply. This, um, I'm going to go skip this one because I just... Great. What is the benefit? Many of you may have already heard of this program. It is a program that allots up to $30 per month discount for broadband service and associated equipment rentals for eligible households. For households that are on tribal lands, that benefit goes up to $75 per month. Not all um, are participating in this program, and this is specifically to providers. So some providers are participating. Among those that are, some are offering an additional benefit of a one-time discount of up to $100 for what's called a connected device. And a connected device can be anything from a laptop, desktop computer, or a tablet that must be purchased through a participating provider. And the consumer is going to make a payment towards that device of at least $10 but no more than $50 as the copay. So we talk a lot about households in this program, and many of you who are familiar with federal programs know that households can be defined very differently. So for the purposes of this program specifically, a household is a group of people who live together and share money, and they don't necessarily have to be related. Um, examples of where this could be uh, not a household is, for example, if you live with someone but you don't share expenses, or you share expenses with someone but you're not living under the same roof. So a household can qualify if there is an eligible dependent in the household. And many cases, the example we give is if there's a child in the household that meets one of the eligibility criteria, which I'll mention in a few moments. There may be a questions that, additional questions that you have to answer about your household when you apply for this program. Um, and a household worksheet is available to determine eligibility. So there are many examples of households, as I mentioned before, but I'm just going to pick a, one from what would be a household and what would be a multiple household, just kind of a visual. For example, a married couple who lives together can, must share the ACP benefit. So even if uh, the wife qualifies because of she is enrolled in one program and the husband qualifies because he is enrolled in another, that you cannot enroll for two benefits. It's always one benefit per household. So for multiple households, you can have, for example, four roommates who live together but don't share money. So each roommate can then apply for this benefit. So here are some of the eligibility criteria mentioned below. Many families or households apply because they are at or below 200% of the federal poverty guidelines. And before I continue, I would like to say that you as an applicant don't have to do the math. There is within the application, whether you fill it out online or whether you download it and fill out the paper copy, a section that actually helps you determine where you are in terms of income to meet this eligibility requirement. But there are also some other criteria that you can use to apply. And I'll just mention a few. Um, I have shared this presentation with NDC, and so if anyone's interested, they can obtain it from them, or at the end you'll see an email address where you can get it um, from the FCC. So, for example, if someone in the household participates in Medicaid or they receive Supplemental Security Income, which is SSI, uh, if you are talking to someone who meets the qualifications for tribal lands, they could participate in various programs, including the Tribal Temporary Assistance for Needy Families, which is called the Tribal TANF for short. Again, um, I'm going to mention 
children here. If there is a child in the household in K through 12 that participates in the National School Lunch Program or the School Book Breakfast Program, that household can also apply under that eligibility. So there is one other qualifier which is called Lifeline. And a lot of people may be familiar with this program. Some consumers have actually asked us, what is Lifeline? So Lifeline is a federal program that lowers the monthly cost of phone and internet. Eligible consumers receive up to $9.25 off their bill, and for households that are on tribal land, that benefit goes up to $34.25. For this program, unlike the Affordable Connectivity Program, if you are a household that is applying on, based on income levels, you must meet, be at or below 135% of the federal poverty guidelines. And again, when you, if you are not familiar with the federal poverty guidelines and you're filling out the application, the great thing is that there is a section that actually walks you through to help the household determine if you are eligible under this qualifier. And again, like the Affordable Connectivity Program, there are other qualifiers. Um, and I mentioned some of these before, such as Medicaid and the Supplemental Security Income. Veterans pensions and survivor benefit as examples also qualify you for Lifeline. The great thing about this program, the Affordable Connectivity Program, is if you do qualify for Lifeline and the Affordable Connectivity Program, you can actually have both benefits, and that's a great thing. And they don't necessarily have to come from the same provider. So your Lifeline provider may cover your phone, and let's say you have an affordable connectivity provider that can cover your internet costs. So this is a great thing for consumers, meaning they have other options for help with payment. There are two steps to enroll in this program. For consumers that have access to the internet, they can go to acpbenefit.org to apply directly online, or they can print out an application and mail it in. The paper application actually has instructions of where you can mail the information. And I like to add just an additional tip here. There, again, there are two ways to apply. For consumers, whether they apply online or whether they use the paper application, I, stepping out of my FCC role, would recommend that they wait till they receive a confirmation that they're actually enrolled to receive the benefit versus just sending the application and immediately calling a provider. And this is because when you fill out the application and the website is managed by the Universal Service Administrative Company, the provider usually asks for a confirmation number which is included in your either correspondence, you may receive an email saying that you now, congratulations, you're now eligible for the program. So once all this happens, then you can contact your preferred participating provider to select a plan and have the discount applied to your bill. But let's say, for example, your provider says, I am not participating in this program, sorry, and you really want to receive the benefit because you have been approved for it, you can go to the FCC's webpage, fcc.gov slash ACP for more information. We have a list there of participating providers in, listed by state, but the Universal Service Administrative Company also has a list that you can help find providers at their acpbenefit.org site under the Companies Near Me tool. What you can do is you can either enter your zip code or your city and state to find a provider near you. So some providers may also have what is called an alternative application that they will ask you to complete. This has been approved by the FCC. It's just additional information that they may need for, to enroll you as one of their customers. Again, eligible households must apply for the program and contact a participating provider to select a plan. If you receive a confirmation saying, congratulations, you're eligible to enroll, but don't contact a provider, you won't see the benefit because you must contact a provider. So that's really important for I am with the Consumer and Governmental Affairs Bureau in the FCC, so we talk a lot about consumer protections. There are a lot of protections for this program, and I will just name a few. 
For example, and the one I always like to lead with is actually the fact that the FCC has a dedicated process for ACP complaints through our complaints um, online com consumer complaint center, or you can, for those consumers that don't have access online, they can call us via our toll free number 888-225-5322. But there are so many cons uh, consumer protections for this program. This includes uh, the reducing the potential for bill shock or financial harm. It includes ensuring that consumers have access to supported broadband services, regardless of their credit status. And also, it, another one that I like to um, let consumers know about is it's preventing consumers from being forced into a more expensive or lower quality plan in order to receive the ACP benefit. Well, this concludes kind of the overview of the program, but the FCC does have an ask, and I'd like to thank NDC because they have been a fabulous outreach partner for us. So what does an outreach partner do? Well, an outreach partner really does share all this information that I have shared with you with the community, and especially those consumers that are eligible but may not know where to get the information. You can always request a speaker to present. We also do train the trainer sessions by sending an email to acpspeakers at fcc.gov. And if you want to become a partner, not only for information about the affordable uh, connectivity program, but all the consumer-facing information that the FCC provides, please send an email to outreach at fcc.gov. Our outreach toolkit does include many different types of materials, and I'll just name a few. We have social media images, we have newsletter inserts, we have printables that include a fact sheet that is available in 14 different languages. We have videos and PSAs available, and all of this is free to download and use as your community needs the information. And this can be reached through our hub, again, fcc.gov ACP. And I'd like to conclude with this list of resources. I'm just going to point out a, a few. We have our consumer hub at fcc.gov slash ACP. For consumers that need information but don't have access to the Internet, they can always call the ACP Support Center at 877-384-2575. And if you don't remember any of the information shared here today, please send an email to acpinfo at fcc.gov. Thank you for everything and having me here today, and I look forward to answering any questions that you may have. Excellent. A round of applause for Kayla, please. Thank you. Any questions? A young lady right here <laughs> wants to ask a question. Oh. <laughs> um, hi, my name is Kat Oriel. I'm a graduating senior from the George Washington University. Um, and I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about the nonprofits that you connect with um, in funding this outreach. We definitely work with a lot of different uh, nonprofits. I don't have permission to kind of mention them all, but I'm going to mention some that you can see on our website. We have this section, um, fcc.gov slash outreach, where we list a lot of our partners. And many of our partners are also available um, to participate in our call. So we have partner on a national level. Of course, NBC is one of our biggest partners. We have ARP as a partner. We have partnered with National Urban League. We have um, partnered with LULAC, which is the League of Latin, the, oh my God. <laughs> uh, and, I'm, and I help out with LULAC. Uh, so LULAC is the League of United Latin American Citizens. And we have also partnered with a lot of the different chambers of commerce, both on a grand level. So for example, the Uni United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. We have also done here locally with the Greater Washington Hispanic Chamber of Commerce because the, the information also needs to be shared locally. I can go on and on. We also work with a lot of organizations. Um, the National PTA we have worked with. So we look at all different types of organizations. We have worked with a lot under the health. People uh, sometimes look at me and say, well, why health? 
for a telecom, but it's because in a lot of community-based health centers, this information is crucial to share. Um, on another level, we have a lot of federal partners. Um, I'm not sure if she's still here, but we do work with the Federal Trade Commission. We work with the Veterans Administration. We work with USDA, the Department of Education, and I can go on and on and on, but that's, and that's just a small a piece of the type of partners that we have. Uh, we go national, we go local. If, if there is a local chapter of an organization, we are more than happy to work with you. Uh, we really do ask, all that we ask for is that organizations give us a contact and add, be added to our list to share information. And I will stop there <laughs> because, I, as I said, I'm very enthusiastic about the work we do with our partners. It's so crucial. Well, that uh, we, we go ahead, Faith. We have time for one more question. And it really works. It, it really works. And we just have to go to the ground. Um, really going out there in, well, right now there's not a lot of uh, festivals, but I think a lot of them are coming up. I'm encouraging FCC to go around again and, you know, some of the giveaways and also we hope to have more workshops um, with all the uh, telecom and cable company that are participating. So, and thank you, Kayla, for the work that she, she does. It's really, really actually great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you everyone for, again, for having me here today.